speaking of decisions. Yeah. Williams. Yeah. So lots of noise coming out of Williams this weekend. In so Australia. much. Alex Albon totaled his car, essentially. Um, like, I'd say half a million dollars worth of damage and having to get it back to their factory. Um, destroyed the chassis. They didn't have a spare. They are extremely behind in their plan and everything um, coming off of the winter break. So they did not have a spare in Australia. James Wells has already come out and said, like, it's so unacceptable. We shouldn't be here. Like, we're a F1 team and we don't have an extra chassis. Like, this is deplorable, basically. Yeah. Um, but I know that they are working on changing things. So what they did is they took Logan out of his car and gave it to Alex for him to race because they decided as a team that's where they had the better opportunity to score points. Right. Lots of drivers, including Max, have spoken on this, and he said, you know, I'd be pissed. I would have flown home. I also would have wrecked my car so no one could race in it. I loved his statement. I, I loved it, too. I, You know, Max is growing on me, I have to say. Like, I, I can't get behind Checo, but Max is really growing on me. Yeah. Um, With his, like, I hate everybody attitude. Huge fan. Right. Um, Why do you think I like him so much? Know, that's, ex- that's exactly it. <laughs> Um, but do you think, Catherine, this was the right call for Williams? I mean, you have to look at, I mean, yes. The the, the answer is, is unfortunately yes. Does it like look good, you know, on paper? No. PR wise? No. But Al- Alex Albon scored 27 of Williams' 28 points last year. Um, and not to, you know, be against Logan, but Logan inherited the P10 when he did score points. He didn't, you know, he didn't get it on, did on he... like, real merit. And, no, you know, and he had a bunch of DNFs. Crash last year, yeah. The, not not as, as egregiously many as, say, like a Nicholas Latifi or a Nikita Mazepin, but still a lot more more than, than expected. And Alex Albon, his best finish so far was where Alex finished in this race, which was right. P11. Was it unfortunate and still doesn't look great because Alex didn't end up scoring a point despite basically every driver on the grid's best efforts? Um, no, but was it the right call? I do think so, yes. No, I'm I'm in 100% agreement with you. I mean, if you look where Logan's finished historically, it's mm-hmm. he didn't finish or he's P15 below. You know what I mean? Like, there's not a lot of times when he's actually fighting for points. Right. Like, Albon, DNF, or Albon got, like, P16, I would question it, but he was fighting for a point in P11. Yeah, he was he was fighting for a point the entire race and, you know, he did exactly what was expected of him. It just unfortunately it was P12 or he wasn't P12, it was P11. Um, but he he did what Logan probably wouldn't have done. Yeah. And that's just that that is an understanding that Williams has as a team that is in a really uncomfortable position to have to make that type of choice and is at risk of making these these choices again because they don't have backups right no so they so they sent alex's car back to the uk for repairs on australian saturday american friday um and it will be sent to japan to meet the team once they all make it there in two weeks but they're not going to have a third bucket um for japan they're not going to have a third one for china and the biggest risk for china is china is the first sprint race. race of the year sprint or race, sprint race. And, not street race, yeah sorry. yeah drill. <laughs> i meant to say sprint race so, so I heard them say that this weekend, yeah. and I was like, "Oh, oh no, crap. the first one of the year." Yeah, and you you know how much we do not love sprint races, and you will hear as we go throughout the season. But we're not there yet. We have to go to Suzuka first. I'm really excited to see what Suzuka le- looks like in the spring for for racing. But I'm um, just gonna say this: yeah. we may not even have a sprint race in China. I'm still not convinced <laughs> we're racing in China. This is. This is Las Vegas 2023 all over again. Right? Like, that that's a real question. So, Williams is still at risk of super duper having to make awkward calls until we are through this, you know, East Asian point yeah. of, of the schedule. Um, but... You know, Logan has been a class act about this. Obviously, no one wants to, like, 
you know, Carlos couldn't race because he had to go to the hospital. Logan couldn't race because his teammate needed his car on his 28th birthday. What a present. Um, But Logan has handled it really well. Obviously, you know, Logan knows the kind of position that he's in as the, you know, the Williams driver who is learning, you know, hopefully not still learning the car, but is, is, you know, has, has made a jump from the lower series to F1. Um, and obviously he's not a rookie anymore, but still he's the, you know, rookiest guy on the grid. Yeah. I mean, the big question to me, and I'll ask it to you is like, what does this say about William's confidence in Logan, like going forward and his seat? I don't know if it says anything yet. Um, I think that right now, like, obviously, Logan knows that he has to put forth a lot this season in order to keep his seat. I haven't really considered, you know, who are, would be the front runners to, to take over for him. Obviously, Kimi Antonelli, who's one of the Mercedes juniors, is probably the top one. Um, I don't know about, you know, Mick Schumacher, because I, you know, he's just hasn't really been spoken about um, at all. But I in this case, it's more of a Alex is performing better right now in the first two races of the season. We need him to, you know, get us as, you know, as close to the points as possible to help us in this midfield battle this season. See, and I, I disagree. I think this is like, we don't have confidence in you because just like, take a step back. Say this is the situation for Aston Martin, Alpine. Are they real? like, say it. Fernando's car was totaled. They didn't have another chassis. Are they going to say, hey, Lance, we got to take your car for, you know, Fernando? No, because they, you know, it seems like they have confidence in, like, well, okay, maybe Aston Martin's a bad example because of <laughs> Daddy Stroll. Alpine, right? Say it happens with Gasly. Oh, Gasly and Akon would murder each other before, you okay, know. Maybe another poor example. V Carb. We'll take V-Card, right? Well, <laughs> they always favor Daniel and Yuki's driving a lot better. I'm just saying, if you, like, Charles and Carlos, virtually the same. Yeah. Again, a bad example because they favor Charles. But Charles. <laughs> say, Carlos, this happened to Carlos, like, they're not going to say, hey, Charles, get out of your car. If Checo did it, Checo would be SOL. They wouldn't take the car away from Max. Granted, it's right. Max. But it's this essentially the same. And I don't think they would do that, but... Maybe the best example is Lewis and George, right? Say George crash, crashes his car. They're going to say, hey, Lewis, give up your car or vice versa. George, give up your car for Lewis. No, I don't think so. Because I think I think they would get I think that they would ask George to give Lewis his car. I don't I don't think they would. I I I think that the, that there's just a little bit more Lewis bias on on I mean, on Mercedes. See, the other one I could really see that maybe is a better example because one is consistently scoring points and one is not as V carb. And like if Yuki totaled his car, I could see them asking Danny for his car. Mm. Maybe. There's also a lot of Danny bias. But but what I'm yeah. trying to say, bottom line, is I don't think another team would have made this decision. I think it was a Williams specific because of the situation i don't know you you know you know you know where where it is is i think that we would see this at haas but they both scored but like i think okay hulk is scoring one point it's not like he's getting like 10 points a race but if you look historically hulk has performed better than k mag so i do think that if haas was in this situation which we could you know it wouldn't surprise me if we ever saw haas in this situation because they have no money i i do think that they would ask kevin to give up his car for Kevin's a different person than logan and i don't think kevin would be okay with it because i think logan well i mean i don't think he'd be okay logan's not okay with it no but at the same time i think he understands it where k mags is always on the cusp and so is you know uh hulk i don't think they're that far apart i think albon and and logan are um further apart than k mags and hulk yeah no i can i can agree with you on that and i think that that Alex has a lot more experience, which is enabling him to completely outdrive the cars that he's been given this season right. and last season. Um, but I still don't think <clears throat> necessarily that this, you know, speaks to a lack of faith in Logan being able to perform. 
I don't know. I think it does because it's like, hey, we don't believe that you can score points. We're giving the card to Albon. Like, that's how I'm reading it, though. But at the end of the... I mean, but again, Albon is more experienced. He's been in the, you know, in F1 longer. He has been doing better as of late versus, you know, Logan. So, I don't know. But that's... I would not be surprised if we don't see Logan on the grid next year. Oh, no, I I, I agree with you there. I, I definitely, like, his, his seat is vulnerable. Williams, where is he going to be? You know what I mean? So. Right, exactly. So so that is lots of questions to to be continued. Yeah. As we discuss all year long. 